So if your vision's blurry, you just can't see clearly, sometimes all it takes is just getting a prescription for glasses or contacts, and then everything's perfect. But not all the time. Let's talk about the difference between visual acuity and refractive error. Hi, my name is Dr. Joshua Cohen. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist here at Cohen Laser and Vision Center in Boca Raton, Florida. And today we're gonna to talk about the difference between visual acuity and refractive error. So visual acuity broadly is just your ability to see, period. It's how we measure the resolution in your eye like the resolution in your camera. You can have a two megapixel camera or a 12 megapixel camera. And the detail that those cameras can see are actually a little bit different. Now, here in the eye, we don't really have megapixels. We have resolution based on the spacing of our rods and cones in our retina. And that's biologically limited up to a certain maximum. So the eye's capacity to see is pretty standard across everyone. And that's why we have a reference point, 2020, meaning what the normal eye can see at 20 feet your eye should be able to see at 20 feet. Now, when we measure your visual acuity, we use a chart like this called the Snellen chart, and we usually put that at a fixed distance, let's say 20 feet away. And if we can't get a lane that's 20 feet in length, we use a mirror to kind of simulate that distance. And then as you read down the chart, we basically can measure what that line is that you're seeing, and we compare that to a reference. So if you're seeing 2020, then what you see at 20 feet, a normalized he's at 20 feet. If you're seeing 2040, that means what you're seeing at 20 feet, a healthy eye can see back at 40 feet. So you need to be closer. You just don't have the same type of detail. If you're seeing 2100, that means what you're seeing at 20 feet, a healthy eye sees at 100 feet. So not so great. If your vision is beyond the chart, meaning you're looking and you can't see any letters at all, then we have to either move you closer to the chart, in which case, let's say the big E, which is 2400 vision. If you can't see that at 20 feet and we move you 10 feet away instead of 20 feet away, we notate that as 10400, for example. And if even then, unfortunately, you still can't see the chart, then we have other means to assess your vision. We can basically put fingers in front of your face and say, well, can you count the amount of fingers there and what the distance that might be? And we can translate that into Snellen equivalents. Or if even that doesn't work, we can just move our hands and see if you can see movement or shadows. We call that hand motion vision. And if even that doesn't work, then we shine light at the eyes. Can you see the light or not? That's called light perception. But all of that is really a measure of your visual acuity, meaning how much detail your eye can resolve. And the standard, for example, at 2020, if you're interested, is one minute of arc which means that you can see detail at the resolution of one minute of arc, which means the angle drawn between the white and black parts of the letter from the distance of the chart to your retina and back out. That arc, that angle is the resolution. In fact, a 2020 letter E has five minutes of arc because there's a black, white, black, white, and black. So you have five little areas of detail that your eye has to determine the resolution of in order for you to see. So that's kind of how it all works. And there's a lot of complex math and all that and well beyond the scope of this discussion, but just some detail if you're interested. Now, we also have near visual acuity, which is technically what this pocket card is, which is technically a Rosenbaum chart, but it's the same idea as a Snellen chart, just a little bit closer. And we often use this point or Jaeger notation, which just means that instead of saying 2020 up close, we might say J1 plus, but the idea is the same. We can switch back and forth between a whole bunch of different rotations that all basically tell us the same thing. Now, sometimes patients can see perfectly far away, but not up close, and that's presbyopia. And we'll talk more about that in other videos. Now that's all visual acuity. And we often measure vi visual acuity in terms of best corrected visual acuity, meaning if you can't see it naturally, can you see it with correction or with glasses? And those glasses have a prescription and that's where the refractive error component comes into play. Now let's say glasses don't help you at all. Well, then that might mean you have a problem related to your visual acuity that's unrelated to the refracting ability of the eye or not due to the light bending in general, due to some other problems. Maybe the retina itself is damaged due to macular degeneration or diabetic retinopathy. Or maybe you have a cataract where the light's just not focusing because it can't penetrate through an opacity in the natural lens within the eye. Or maybe you have a corneal scar due to an infection. Or maybe your optic nerve is damaged from multiple sclerosis. There are literally thousands of different causes of reduced visual acuity, and that's our job as your eye doctor to determine what the problem may be. But if the problem is just a refractive error, we can usually fix that. And we can fix that with glasses or contacts or refractive surgery. 
Now, if someone comes into the office and can't see the chart, and we don't know if it's due to a refractive problem or some sort of other anatomic or biological issue, then we can use a pinhole test as a quick shortcut before we do a formal refraction. A pinhole is basically slid down here, and when we look at the chart through the little holes, the holes filter out all the light that's not in focus, and just through the principle of diffractive optics, just gives us the light that is focused straight on through to the back all the way to the retina. And that can actually simulate uh, a correction of like plus or minus five diopters. So it can really simulate a lot of improvement that glasses would do without doing a formal refraction. Now, if there's no improvement with pinhole vision on the Snellen chart, then the problem is likely not a refractive error. Now, refractive error just means that the shape of your eye relative to the length of the eye is not quite ideal. The eye can be too curved or too flat, and we talked about that again in my basic video on ocular anatomy, and I'll link that up here if you just want a reference. But in general, when the eye is perfectly in focus without correction, that's called an emotropic eye. That means that the curvature and length is ideal. Now, if you're farsighted, that means that the eye is actually too flat relative to the distance between the front and back of the eye. So you need more curves to be added to the lenses in your eye with convex lenses with a plus designation. And we measure these in terms of diopters, plus one, plus two, plus three diopters. Meaning as we go up, the focusing power increases. So what is a diopter? A diopter is a reference point between one over the focal length of the lens itself. Meaning, when the light goes through the lens, when does it converge? If it converges one meter away, that's a one diopter lens. If it converges a half a meter away, that's a two diopter lens. If it converges a quarter or 25 centimeters away, that's a four diopter lens. And the plus notation means that as the light passes through the lens, it actually focuses behind the lens. This has a magnification effect. And that's why for people who have presbyopia or the inability to see up close, they need plus power or the ability to magnify things up close. And if you have a plus one, then the focal distance is actually about a meter away. So if you're looking for reading glasses, the higher you go on the power, plus one, plus 150, plus two, the closer the focusing distance. So therefore, if you're at the computer, you're a little farther away, your monitor may be a little farther away, you might be able to see perfectly fine with a 1.5 or two diopter lens. But if you're reading a book, book in bed or you're doing needlepoint, something very detailed or very close to your face, you might want to go up to a 250 or a 3, just as an example. Now that's for patients who are farsighted, and that just has to do with the optics of the eye. They need plus power in order to see, in order for the light to focus on the retina properly. If you're nearsighted, your eye is too curved, meaning that the light is focusing in front of the retina. To fix that, you need to spread the light out a little bit. Therefore, we use a diverging lens or a concave lens versus a convex lens for hyperopes. Actually has a focusing distance or a focal length in front of the lens, not behind. So therefore, we use minus notation. A minus one diopter lens means that the focal length is actually in front of the lens by a meter. A minus five means that it's actually 20 centimeters in front of the lens. Now, these have a minifying effect. I'll show you as an example. This is a plus diopter lens, a plus five. Look what happens when I put it in front of my eye. Gets a little bigger, doesn't it? That's the effect of a plus diopter lens. It's a magnifying lens because it converges light. So therefore, when the light actually hits you from the other side of the lens, it appears to be a little bit larger. Now this is a minus five diopter lens and look what happens now. My eye appears a little bit smaller. That's because the light is actually converging in front of the lens, not behind. So when you're looking through it, that converging light actually has a minifying effect. It's just how the optics play out. Now let's say your eye has a little mix, a little plus, a little minus, that's called an astigmatism. And that usually represents by one axis versus another. And then the axis is where that orientation might be. As you can see here, as I rotate the astigmatism correction on this particular lens, we see how the letters begin to distort and stretch. And that's the effect of a mix between one axis being more positive and one axis being more negative relative to that particular lens. But that's an astigmatism. Now it's our job as doctors and technicians to determine what the prescription is. The prescription is how we tell the optician to make your glasses to compensate for your natural refractive error. There is a systematic process to determine your refractive error, and it's using a machine like this called the foropter, where the technician will put different lenses and swap them in front of the eye to determine what is better, one or two. Meaning if we make little adjustments in the lenses, is the image getting sharper? When we ask you one or two, we're not looking at whether it's bigger or smaller, or whether it's bolder or softer, but whether it's crisper or sharper. That's really what we're looking for. 
and we can slowly navigate this process and give you a prescription that determines your overall focusing ability or what your eye's refractive error is. So there are three numbers designating a refractive error, a sphere notation, a cylinder notation, and an axis, meaning the overall focusing power of the eye, the degree of astigmatism, and where that astigmatism falls. Notice how different these numbers are than 2020 or 2040. That's because refractive error and visual acuity are two distinct things. They're certainly related, but not the same thing. Now, if you have a greater degree of refractive error, plus four, plus five, or minus four, minus five, then your Snellen equivalents are gonna be much worse on the chart uncorrected than if you are a minus one, for example. You need significantly more help in terms of refracting to get your vision where it needs to be. So the bottom line, your visual acuity is your eye's ability to see how much detail your eye is able to resolve. And refractive error is whether or not the problem in your visual acuity is due to focusing light. If it's just due to focusing light, then glasses and contacts will be your fix. But if not, then we have to figure out what the problem is. So if you're coming in for an evaluation for refractive surgery, let's say you want to get LASIK, and we find that the problem is not just a refractive error, but something else, then LASIK unfortunately won't be the fix that you're looking for. And we have to dig a little bit deeper and find out what else we might need to do to get your vision sharper. But this was just an overview as to how we go through certain parts of the exam and the terminology that we might use. Write down in the comments below what your experience is with getting a glasses prescription. And if you have any questions about these concepts, please put them in the comment section as well. For more information, you can visit our website at colonlaser.com and you can always call to set up an appointment. So thanks again for your time, and I will see you in the next one.